good evening to all the uh, participants and then uh, i sincerely thank uh, greenformation.com for having uh, given me this opportunity to deliver today's lecture so let me very quickly uh, go because as usual uh, the schedule is we take half an hour uh, presentation and half an hour discussion part see now uh, the very fundamental issue is why the issue of soilless protected cultivation came uh because you know just like you have a smart house just like you got a flat system just like you got a metro rail see everything cannot be on a soil and with 6 lakh 48000 villages in india okay and then cultivating somewhere then marketing it somewhere see most of the markets are all in cities whether especially in agriculture produce and all that but all the production centers are all in remote villages so therefore people thought that uh, you know and where with the land value as soon as you are coming towards the cities okay to reduce that the transportation cost but the land value is going to be very high if then the land value is going to be high the traditional methods of agriculture or horticulture when you are doing it is going to not only cost you a lot but also the value of the land is a lot therefore you have to produce more crop per drop and then you will have to have an efficient supply chain and a value chain and then you cannot afford to produce it somewhere in the remotest uh, village of india and then transport it to the metropolitan cities the supply chain is going to cost you a lot so therefore in order to avoid all these things the issue of soilless and protected cultivation is going to come as you already know that the indian institute of horticulture research is having the center for uh, protected cultivation in horticulture we got the advanced center so i'll be very quickly telling you about it that is the topic and this is matters we have already been telling this see now when you use a soilless media what happens especially in a nursery the earliness of producing okay better nutrient supply we can reduce the wastage of nutrients and so on so i'll just quickly go see why you know see suppose you know you want to produce more and where is the soil where is the land see the land reclamation is more costly recently satguru and others you know they said save the soil soil was misused in the green revolution days people are dumping fertilizers pesticide especially when you want to go the organic way okay you cannot afford all these things you should have a smarter type of production with the soilless media and then the soil cannot is not a sink and the soil is not a pit where you can dump everything so now let us see quickly see this is our center of excellence on protected cultivation of horticulture crops we are giving emphasis on the soilless protection and then the cocoa peat production and uh, uh, hydroponics and so on and so forth why very quickly i'll be showing you recently this was inaugurated by our agriculture minister narendra tomar and the state agriculture minister shobha karanlal she was just here last uh, month See now you see how all the temperature humidity everything is going to be controlled there's no soil i'll just tell you in the next slide how we are using the small small uh, trays pro trays cocoa peat and then even small uh, glasses and see these are all the cocoa peat where you put and how the nursery management is going to take place with this without any soil and then earlier even nurseries were made only in the soil so used to put it see especially you know when you talk about uh, preparing small small uh, tomato plants and chili plants where the tomato leaf curl virus uh, the bemisia tabaci which is a vector is going to inject so therefore we say nursery management they have to put a mesh or a net and then they have to do it otherwise it will inject the virus and later on you cannot do anything once when the uh, chilies or anything is transplanted in the field see look at all this wonder peat and how the cultivation is taking place and look at the very heavy value simply this is a wonder peat small bag what you are seeing i'll tell you the theory part later see it's a bumper production especially you know uh, you can control the condition you can control the climate you can control the humidity and there is no question of any seasonality coming into the crop see nobody can say today that tomato or all this uh, soilless protected crops it should be grown only in the cold season or the warm season or the summer season all the three seasons it can be grown because we are trying to control both the sunlight see actually the rabi kharif summer is only an issue because of the uh, sunlight and the day length see now when you are when you are controlling that in a poly house or a green house or a glass house see now i think uh, you already know what is the difference between a poly house a green house see green house basically is to avoid the green house gases whereas a poly house is actually uh, you know controlling all the different other uh, uh, weather parameters 
and then uh, making the continue continual condition for the crop to grow and look at how nutrients has been given see more of potash you get bigger fruits okay and then you know more of nitrogen you get the vegetative growth and more leaves so even these things are controlled in the soilless cultivation and in the next slide i'll say see, this is the vertical farming you can have uh, you know uh, you can vertically you can uh, mount it into about 5 to 6 uh, rows like this so that every plant is going to get sunlight and there's absolutely no competition the canopy architecture is also going to be modified this is exactly what we did in ihr you see how other sensors and other things will also control the light look at this is the aerial view at uh, hesergata ihr where our uh, center for protected cultivation look at all this uh, uh, poly houses which are erected uh, with the mission on development of horticulture the mids funds okay the government of india see it has been done and here they not only do research but also train a lot of fpos and other people to take take up this particular soilless cultivation and other activities and you see how the structure is there both for the nursery so we also have a polycarbonate fan and a pad greenhouse see how, uh, here again you know the question of controlling the condition is coming in these greenhouses now we'll go to the these are the pro trays absolutely no soil we just put some cocoa peat the nursery normally when you use this sort of soilless uh, nursery management which are, i mean in a commercial nursery the production cost may be very less but uh, they charge 5 rupees per seedling see that is how it is going to be any seed it doesn't matter whether tomato or uh, the seed you can take and give it to them uh, the uh, actually the uh, the seedling cost does not include the seed cost please is very careful so suppose you give them a hybrid uh, tomato seeds and they will convert into seedlings and give the cost is going to be 5 rupees per seedling still it is worth it because you need not waste your land and the drudgery of uh, creating this uh, nursery and for transplantation and look at this fan and pad polyos look at this huge fans which is going to control the temperature humidity and so on and look at these fans here fan and pad polyos okay insect proof net house i told you especially in case of uh, chilies capsicum and all that you know the, uh, the especially the leaf curl virus lcv is going to be affected because bemisia tabaci the white fly is the vector so especially during the nursery stage if you have to avoid this uh, it's very good otherwise uh, you will have a lot of problems and you plant transplant and look at this insect proof net house see this is exactly what farmers has to do on the soil but now we you know in the polyos even without soil i'll show you in the next slide and then this is our water harvesting pond so absolutely for everything soil is not required you can have a small drench and you know see this is also equal to a soilless pit see now if you simply have a water what will happen all the water will drain down and uh, it will start leaching out to avoid that we put a mulch similarly in soilless cultivation we supply nutrients so i'll show you that also you see here which we, we are using all the tubes here for every pot we have been uh, see these are the nutrient mixture especially in hydroponics where we create the optimum nutrient mixture of n p k and then the required micronutrients zinc boron and whatever whatever and then you know you see look at this uh, uh, horizontal trace where every part the cocoa peat is there and then they are going to supply the nutrients inside that and that's how we are getting so this is our center of excellence and protected cultivation of horticulture crops so absolutely bumper production no issues see wherever the demand is high wherever you are closer to the cities wherever the seasonality is an issue wherever the off season crops are in high demand and wherever the markets are closer this is how you have to do vertical integration with the markets and you will have to do it and this is the hand pollination you see the pollen uh, grains are all uh, they are collected in this asphyxiator so this uh, girl is actually pollinating so that you know the pollination percentage should be very high so this is this uh, stacked uh, tomatoes here so the pollination is occurring so absolutely no wastage both at the soilless and the aquaponic whatever is the thing the idea here is to increase the production at a lesser cost with more efficiency so we have also put a lot of technical bulletins you can go through it look at all this uh, pro trace and they are going to come up so this is how even even by doing a nursery you can make a lot of money here not just your production production obviously especially in a very high value crops like vanilla okay high value cucumbers high value gherkins where 100% export is going to be done you will have to use these sort of things okay so now uh, so issues we are facing we have already told you why 
uh, there may be drought, rising temperatures, polluted water systems, lack of irrigation, poor water management. All these things we we should go for hydroponics and soilless cultivation. After all, a plant requires only the soil was only a medium where nutrients and water had to be supplied. Sunlight is definitely an important element for photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide combines with water, uh, you know, to produce the glucose, the C6H12O6 molecule. So it's just a medium. So what? The medium is a uh, irrespective. Earlier people were cooking with fire, uh, firewood. Nowadays micro ovens have come. The cooking has become smart. Similarly, for photosynthesis, whatever we require for the plants, we are going to give it in soilless cultivation. So this is absolutely well said. So there is a tray, there is a growing medium, and you know there is a wick maybe there, which is going to be so all the. It may be through air or it may be even through the water. So we put the air pumps and then floating platforms with plants in the water culture when we call it as hydroponics and then the nutrients are absorbed through the root system. And even the roots require oxygen, so we put this air pump to supply oxygen even for the roots so that it will respire and both um, the xylem which transports the nutrients from the roots to the shoots where the photosynthesis takes place and sunlight should be adequately given. Uh, you know, at least about uh, six to eight hours of uh, active sunlight. Okay, whereas in a rabi crop, the sunlight requirement is less. Therefore, it is in the we used to call it as rabi. But if we give that uh, optimum condition, rabi curry for summer will disappear. So this is about the soilless culture. We can have a better quality of produce. So continuous cultivation is possible. Absolutely no weed problem. No need of fumigation. So because there is no other plant at all. See, soils may have. Weeds and other plants, roguing, and you know the agronomic practices, ploughing, tilling, uh, all those things are avoided here. More productivity per unit area and time, more crop per drop, and things like that. And also, the climate change and global warming is occurring in a very big scale. You must have seen a lot of rains, especially in the coming five days. Also, a lot of rains are going to be there. So, therefore, but our cultivation cannot st stop. You see, now when heavy rains are there, when the harvesting, this is almost the harvesting season of many of the Karif crops. So, people, you know, farmers were crying that, you know, sir, heavy rains have come and the smut is a big problem in uh, p uh, crops like bajra or red gram, which also comes to the harvest, or paddy, whatever. So, therefore, soil is, well, of course, we cannot grow very. Uh, common crops like uh, only high value crops are targeted in the soilless culture. So it may be solid media culture. We use uh, compost and then we use a uh, cocoa peat, which is a very important thing. And aeroponics also, a lot of air circulation going on to the root. This is how the uh, solution culture. So there is definitely a nutrient layer and then there's a water pump continuously. The water also has to be getting cleaned here. So no water logging. See, what happens is when water logging is there, the plants die. That's the big problem. You know, when rains come during the growth season of the plants. See, when water stands, especially during flood situation, the entire crop will be lost because of water logging and suffocation of the roots and the plants die. So this is how we apply all these things for the high-value crop. Okay, solution culture and hydroponic uh, uh, culture. So it's been continuously increasing. Okay, there's an absolute high-value crop, we told you. Uh, lettuce, strawberries, or vanilla, the, the people use it. Hydroponics also, I've already told you, they're controlling the pH. See, many times, you know, when the pH is above 8, we say it's an alkaline soil. Less than 5, we say it's acidic soil. So, normally, plants prefer a neutral pH, and then, you know, if it is acidic or uh, if it is basic, especially we should be using the muriate of potash, okay, to, uh, to increase the pH and uh, sulfate of potash to decrease the pH. So like that, hydroponics also works like this. So obviously high yield and quality we have been telling. Look at this, uh, the plant, you know, it is definitely a fact that what is grown hydroponically, it is something like ICU and then, you know, putting the pregnant mother in an intensive care unit so that, you know, the childbirth and growth in especially rare and uh, precious pregnancies People do it. Similarly, here also we do all those things. So we have a grow back technique. We have a hanging back technique. Of course, this is also going in terms of the vertical farming. Poly bags are arranged in rows here. The, they are arranged vertically. It's filled with growing media, maybe cocoa peat, peat or vermiculite, a very fine soil. So they bring all these things so that it can hold a lot of nutrients, a lot of moisture also, and a lot of aeration to the roots. What will happen is if it's a sticky soil, especially if you don't use the 
correct uh, culture uh, your uh, roots are going to get suffocated and that disadvantage is it's a very high initial cost high operational cost lot of labor is required and high technical know how is required so that's what people thought it only countries like israel and very western countries do it but today uh, very high value crops especially in tissue culture plants and high value crops like vanilla or even uh, you know spices and things like that people use soilless culture especially in and around cities where the land is a very limited scarce resource you can erect these sort of polyhouses in just about one acre or two acres of land you can actually produce your crops and market it like a factory so absolutely no problem so solution culture we have already told you the more signs of it more supply of oxygen is provided to the roots so it is not a static solution culture please understand we also give an aerator here so that continuously uh, the water keeps getting pumped and uh, circulation and again it gets cleaned and comes back so there is also a nutrient reservoir there is a waste tank where the circulation of water is going through the root system and this is just a diagram to show you how the water is going in the nutrient flow so recycled and recirculation is also very important thing so there are different types of hydroponic systems the nutrient film technique ebb and flow drip method and deep flow let us go quickly so nutrient film technique is okay there is a nutrient uh, pond here where we create a small bag of reservoir from here you know to the root system less like a drip system only the nutrients are supplied to the roots and the required moisture only is supplied so here again we use iot and sensors are there you can come down to ihr i'll show you uh, sometime how we use the iot and we have already programmed that one and uh, the required quantity only these uh, monitors and sensors are going to uh, supply only the required amount of moisture humidity and the nutrient so that is nutrient film technique in case of ebb and flow okay again there is a submersible pump continuously it will be putting into this filtrates there is always a reservoir and a do drown tube that is called the ebb and flow method so because here we are using clay granules unless there we use a, a Uh, this one but here we are using clay granules in ebb and flow so drip method again we have told you similar uh, technique but continuously the drip is not uh, through the medium but it is giving an uh, aerial uh, this one okay it is um, sprayed on the top okay we give a spray so that is called the drip method here so you see how it is getting sprayed aerosol sprays we say so it is uh, sprayed like that so soil media culture we have got a lot of organic media we have got saw dust which is definitely coming from the wood industries the cocoa peat coming from the coconut industries peat okay which is then wood ash okay wood chips bark sphagnum moss all these things are by products of some industries and all these things so natural media we have vermiculite a type of clay gravel then rock wool perlite sand and glass wool these are also synthetic media hydrogel foam mats and versus plastic foam so these are the inorganic media that's how we take the culture look at the cocoa peat the perlite vermiculite sphagnum moss all this create aeration you know when i mix this and put them in the pro trays as i showed you all that so that is the example so the density the density the bulk density is less you please see here where the porosity is very high that's the very important issue here. once when the porosity is high see well, how do we classify the soil we classify the soil as you know illite montmore illite okay red soil black soil okay clay soil see we say clay soil you know there is a lot of water stagnation because percolation is less so why we say that you add more organic matter we say because you have to improve the uh, porosity we have to improve the oxygen uh, content and therefore it supplies more organic carbon and oxygen both so that is actually done in making this particular soilless media with this sort of growing media so a lot of substrates also okay peat and perlite in the ratio 1 is to 1 okay fin peat and perlite again 1 is to 1 forest soil which is rich in humus humic acid okay see people have been using papaya production i'm just in a small pot culture you can see i i will show you some of my friends see they have done this uh, terrace farming vertical farming at their house just a 30 40 site two buildings and one of my colleagues dr pichai muthu has done it he grows all his vegetables and whatever he requires for home for himself so you can also do it one is for the commercial soil let's got table grapes also grown nursery we have already told so you know look at this you see you can use all the you know uh, 
amla you know in poly bags grape seedlings in poly bags so today nobody has got the time and the energy and cost to produce the seedlings so that's why the nursery men and the nursery itself has become a very commercial venture to do it i have under 9 minutes to go i'll just quickly conclude so air layering in guava using sphagnum moss see once when you do the air layering wherever we tie it the roots start developing see i think you know the how uh, once when the roots start developing this can be cut off here and then it can be planted that is called the air layering so we require uh, rooting of grape vine cutting in soilless media so you know if you want to do the root system you should use all these things especially the gibberellic acid and the oxalic acid okay oxins and gibberellins gibberellins put the roots okay oxins put the shoots so when you enrich your soils and when you enrich your moss with that sort of medium you can actually see that the rooting occurs and then you can remove them and start putting the cuttings in the soil okay that's how we reward it hardening of banana plant using a peat as a substrate see many times what happens is see banana is a bit uh, moisture loving crop and then you should start hardening see hardening means when you apply the physical moisture stress to these plants you cannot physically do it on a big one and one and a half acre plot and all that so the plant itself has to harden just like you know you are given a military training and to the harsh environment to fight in lay and ladakh how our soldiers are trained similarly we can train our plants also using peat as a substrate once you harden these banana plants even in adverse climate that's why you know we have an institute called as institute for abiotic and biotic stress we have the biotic stress uh, institute coming up at patna we have the uh, national institute for abiotic stress which has come up in maharashtra okay so similarly you know people are working science is there production is there 333 million tons 648000 villages but where is the market where is the vertical integration i have on the 5 minutes to go so similarly aeroponics a lot of air getting circulated we have already told you how water is supplied and you see how the water is actually splashed down to the roots at a regular intervals and these regular intervals are again controlled through iot okay sensor based things and absolutely it will take get water when it is required see ob- already you know people even when they give this aerial spray through the leaves uh, the pl- the plants pick up the water and other nutrient even through the hydrothotes that's the matter and it stores in the vacuole i think you know the basic structure of a plant cell where the nutrients are stored in the vacuole and slowly it picks up see that is the whole biology and physiology of the plant physiology here using that only all these things are structured so i think it should be should understand using the mist soilless culture you see how the lettuce has been growing here so land labor disease and pest water and nutrition all these things can be optimized land is uh, less labor requirement is less disease and pest is less water requirement is less nutrition is also less everything is tailor made control on the environment these are the some of the benefits here secondary benefits obviously there is no uv radiation because we are putting it in the poly houses safe biological control so a lot of pest attack and you know suddenly resurgence of pest can be avoided off season things we have already told you the concept of uh, curry rabi summer has gone away plants grown there a lot of things especially you know both even here also people grow namdhari or many other companies have been doing this even here don't think these are all only european concepts so anyway friends very quickly let us conclude so we are only mimicking the traditional methods and the agronomic practices based on production and soil soil based systems we are putting it into hydroponic soilless uh, protected cultivation they say i showed you soilless culture can be effective tool not only to increase the crop yield and water use but also reduce the environmental impact of greenhouse and nurseries so on better quality better quality of products can be obtained and uh, based on the tailor made consumer preferences Uh, your color taste off season timely requirement all those things can be scheduled very quickly these are i see a lot of prospects and advantages and uh, the day is not far when the, the farmers themselves will get upgraded and trained and use these sort of things reduce the dependence on soil reduce the wastage of their labor reduce the wastage of their nutrients and uh, and uh, you know they should there are two things which has to be optimized in a soilless cultivation we say input factorization and output commercialization you have to reduce the input more crop per drop and then you also have to increase the output per drop and obviously the other marketing and management things like supply chain value chain okay and all these issues will come thank you very much uh, i am going to end my slide show 
uh, now uh, the session is open for discussion uh, thank you very much sir thank you for a wonderful presentation i'll take up the questions from the participants now uh, sir can you please stop sharing the screen sir so that we can I, see your full screen Okay. Move on to the questions now. Uh, the first question is: uh, Do you think in the years ahead, soilless cultivation will become more popular in India? Definitely, it is already becoming popular. You see, especially the people who are into, for example, Reliance Fresh or uh, any of the these big big supermarkets are outsourcing all these things from the farmers. That's how they get their vegetables and things. now actually they are financing these poly houses and protected cultivation and soilless cultivation so that they get continuous supply of the thing and the seasonality has been removed see you get you should get lettuce all the year you should get whatever you ask and demand we all the year already it is going on and a, a huge money has been pumped into the farmers only already the vertical integration is take has taken place with the so called supermarket uh, chain and uh, the farmers who have see suppose you are right from here if you go to mandya and uh, even our kolar and in and around bangalore you know all our peri urban areas lot of uh, uh, these issues are coming because very close to the market see otherwise the transportation cost is going to be huge and you may ask me one question what will happen to the very remote and distant villages they will grow, start growing other crops especially in peri urban areas very high value crop especially horticulture dairy and these sort of crops which is immediately catering to the urban market has already come up with this sort of concept it is it will still grow there is lot of scope and uh, continuously i see a year on year growth it is already growing it's a fantastic market okay Uh, can soilless cultivation be a substitute for soil cultivation to feed the world's population yeah see now the same the farmer is the same it is uh, you know like our party or our grandmother used to prepare in uh, some method but whereas in our generation we are using the micro oven we are using the pressure cooker same idli and chutney we are also preparing but the technology has changed similarly the farmer is same he is going to be upskilled and skilled and reskilled and uh, he is now uh, shifting to these sort of things especially you know see no longer the farmer will do this nursery issues in his field so he he will have a protected nursery where the farmer producing organization and a cluster is going to get about uh, 10000 to 20000 uh, saplings or uh, uh, seedlings so the, nobody is going to earlier every farmer is to raise a nursery that has gone so now that is coming from the nursery in a cbb or cluster based business organization fpos so similarly if it is a very high value crop i showed you those tomatoes and especially capsicums gherkins uh, 100% export okay suppose you want dragon fruit you want some other uh, high value fruit so it is grown like that farmer only is going to do it with less of soil with more of uh, uh, productivity rather than production okay Will soilless cultivation always remain a fringe activity, something only done by small segment of growers? Yeah, see, see now, madam, see it is like, for example, you know, you are staying in a very deluxe flat. Okay, flats come in three bedroom, big bedroom, some prestige group, very concept flats, big common area like that. See, small group because see here we cannot apply. the concept of equity and equality equality is a myth see the fellow with technology the fellow with more uh, industriousness the fellow with more entrepreneurship the fellow is a startup the fellow is intelligent will definitely be making more money the dull fellow who is a laggard will always be behind so therefore the who are the people who will do soilless cultivation protected cultivation definitely it is the innovator See, innovator need not be rich. See, richness and innovativeness don't go together. The fellow who is innovative, the fellow who does the soilless cultivation, he is a high-value commodity farmer. So definitely, he will make more money. See, is there not difference between an IIT cracked uh, engineer and a donation bloody engineer who gets 35 percent? Is there not difference between an IAS officer or a agriculture research scientist like me who have come to the competitive exam? 
and uh, some other idiot who has not passed anything so there is definitely there is always scope for this talent technology and the person who is an innovator who has applied all these things and definitely this sort of uh, difference will be there it should exist and the day is not far where the others will also become actors in the supply chain and value chain we are not saying the fellow who does not do um, the soilless cultivation will not get less money he may become a nursery man he may be a specialist in uh, uh, you know plant protection in nursery he may be a specialist in uh, ultraviolet radiation technology some other farmer may become an iot specialist which are all required for this sort of cultivation thank you okay which vegetables are highly cultivated in protected condition in india yeah see in india especially the so called capsicums okay gherkins especially and you know let to see some of these crops are not native to india for example uh, people are eating lot of uh, lettuce okay then uh, they are expecting spinach you know there was a pope show p o p e y e so you know there they say that uh, pope ate the spinach see some of these are very high valued crops which are imported otherwise we used to get it so they are all grown on this soilless one and uh, even you know yeah, any off season crops see, today we talk about off season uh, mangoes we talk about off season vegetables so they are all grown madam already especially even i have given example okay tomatoes and capsicums okay with their growl grown like that so you get very high value tomatoes and capsicums gherkins especially i can i was here in goribidnur very recently one of my friends nage goda is in uh, 100% exporter i said why don't you give the gherkins to the local market also he is doing it so all these european uh, you know temperate climate see there is another issue in article that you should please understand that's called the tropicalization of temperate crops see many of the temperate crops cannot be grown in the tropical climate because we are 23 and 1/2 degree uh, below we are below the ujjain uh, 23 and 1/2 degree tropic of cancer and uh, tropic of capricorn we are between this so therefore many of the temperate crops uh, have lot of value in uh, the tropical especially bangalore calcutta mumbai and uh, new delhi so therefore they are all grown in and around all this uh, period bun area thank you thank you very much sir we have now completed the round of questions on behalf of agricultureinformation.com we like to thank uh, dr v k j raghavendra rock for the talk and for answering the questions i like to also thank all the participants in the meeting this meeting in now uh, we closed so thank you very much i always am yeah sir. welcome sir <laughs> see i am a great uh, it's a great honor that agriinformation.com has been uh, giving me amteen opportunities Uh, and i sincerely thank your entire team hope for better uh, synchronization and interaction in the coming days and future i no, wish you all in advance uh, thank you very much sure this you also an happy diwali sir okay. you are most welcome thank yeah. you okay i leave the meeting thank you okay sir please sir